Hi, the story is about a Japanese schoolboy named Yuta, who one fine day learns that his father plans to remarry, giving him a stepsister. The girl stands on the top floor of a building, looking down at the city, discussing how a stepbrother is simply a stranger to her. For her, it's natural to treat step-siblings as strangers because nothing has ever connected them. Meanwhile, Yuta, coming home from work, reasons similarly. Even if children become step-siblings in a day, they will always regard each other as strangers, passing by without much interaction. Mother meets the girl, and they continue walking together. Meanwhile, Yuta enters his office, retrieves his phone, and leaves. His father has already met the girl and her mother. One morning, Yuta's father tells him that he has fallen in love again with a woman who has captured his heart. His father says they will all meet tonight, and Yuta agrees. After all, if his father is happy, he won't object. His father tells him that Akiko has a daughter who will be his younger sister. Yuta is puzzled and asks how old she is. His father replies that he doesn't know. That evening, they all gather for dinner. Akiko introduces herself first, and then Yuta introduces himself. Akiko asks her daughter to introduce herself too, and Sayakasaki introduces herself. Yuta is surprised to see how mature she is and begins questioning his father, as he didn't expect them to be the same age. Akiko explains that Saki hasn't taken teenage photos in a long time. After Saki introduced herself, she and Yuta decided to talk while washing their hands. Saki expressed her relief that they hadn't encountered any bad people that day, and everything was fine. They exited the restroom, and Saki chose to have a private conversation with Yuta. Yuta asked her why she trusted him, considering they had just met. Saki replied that Yuta's manner of speech and humor didn't make her distrust him, and she believed Yuta would understand her. She clarified that she didn't expect anything from him, and hoped he wouldn't expect anything from her either. Yuta understood and agreed to leave things as they were. Early the next morning, their father was searching for air freshener and couldn't find his place in the house. Yuta, sitting on the couch, pointed out it was near the window. Yuta didn't understand why his father was so flustered and asked him not to worry so much. His father joked that it wasn't him who needed the pacifier. He explained they were expecting Akiko and Saki to move in that day, and he was preparing to welcome them properly. Just then, the doorbell rang, and Yuta opened the door to find Saki and Akiko, who brought treats. Yuta remarked they didn't need to spend money on such things, but Saki insisted her mother was too kind to arrive empty-handed. They moved into the living room, and Akiko noticed the house was sparkling clean. Yuta mentioned he and his father had been cleaning since early morning. Their father decided to greet the guests in style. He leaped out from the corner and sprayed air freshener in front of them, welcoming them home warmly. Yuta then showed Saki to her room. Saki was surprised, since she had never had a room of her own before. Approaching the window, Saki decided to ask Yuta why he addressed her with respect, considering they were peers and it would be better for them to just be friends. Yuta replied that it was his usual way of speaking, but he admitted that he wanted to see how long he could maintain that respectfulness. Saki asked him to speak more casually, and Yuta quickly changed, saying he would get used to it soon. Saki then shared that she doesn't really talk to anyone at school because she finds it a waste of time to engage with people who don't interest her and that she only has one friend at school. Yuta offered to help her with her things, and Saki agreed. While Yuta was unpacking her boxes, Saki inspected the room and the wardrobe. Suddenly, Yuta clumsily stumbled, and everyone heard it and came into the room. They noticed how Yuta accidentally picked up someone's bra, which made everyone laugh. Saki mentioned that she attends an elite school, but Yuta informed her that he also attends the same school and asked for her forgiveness. He said he would try to act as if he didn't know her, but Saki assured him it didn't bother her. However, just then, Yuta's phone started ringing, so he excused himself to take the call. He was asked to come to work today. At work, a colleague approached him and noticed that Yuta smelled like a girl. Yuta was ready to leave, but she stopped him, saying he was joking, and asked him to tell her about his younger sister. Yuta said she was beautiful and sweet. His colleague then asked him if he could live so comfortably next to such a beauty. However, Yuta told her that he wasn't sure how to behave around her. His friend reassured him not to worry about it and just act normally around her. Late in the evening, Evening, Yuta was walking towards home, realizing it was already late. Putting on his slippers, he noticed Saki sitting on the couch. Yuta told her he was home, and Saki replied that she didn't know how to respond to that, as it was a first for her. Yuta felt embarrassed, but Saki assured him not to think badly of her, and explained that her whole life had been a cycle of her mother coming home from work as she left for school, and vice versa. Saki then shared that she had gone grocery shopping with her mother today and had fun. Yuta asked if the bath was ready, and Saki confirmed it was. 
was. Yuta decided to go first, taking his bath and then coming out. Saki noticed the bath heater sensor and was surprised by it. Later, Yuta wanted to talk to Saki and knocked on her door, telling her she could go wash up as he had finished. Saki heard him, wished him a good night, and Yuta returned the wish before heading to his own room. The alarm clock rings, and Yuta wakes up, turns it off, and gets out of bed. Like all teenagers starting a new week, he heads to the kitchen. There, he meets Saki and greets her with a good morning. Yuta asks if she slept well. Saki replies that she did and thanks Yuta for preparing the bath for her yesterday. However, she asks him not to go through so much trouble next time. Yuta agrees, and Saki finishes tidying up the kitchen. She tells Yuta that she will go to school first and then leaves. During the break, Yuta notices Saki sitting alone. Suddenly, his friend Maru appears and tells him not to even think about looking at Saki. Yuta says he wasn't trying to. Maru then shares a rumor circulating around the school about Saki, suggesting she might be selling her body for money. Yuta doesn't believe it and remarks that he didn't know Maru believed in rumors. However, Maru insists that a close friend of his told him this, recounting how he tried to confess to Saki, but she rejected him and told him everything. Not understanding why Saki acted this way, Maru starts to leave but turns back to congratulate Yuta on getting a younger sister. Just then, the bell rings and they head back to class together. The next lesson is tennis and Maya is playing with her friend. As usual, Maya hits the ball in the wrong direction and her friend scolds her for it. Yuta notices Saki sitting alone again and approaches her, asking, slacking off? Saki is slightly startled and removes her headphones. She asks him why he decided to talk now. Yuta replies that he just wanted to know why Saki chose tennis. Saki explains that Maya asked her to choose tennis because she is her friend and Maya wouldn't associate with bad people. Saki then asks Yuta why he chose tennis and Yuta says he doesn't like team sports and doesn't like people relying on him. Saki notes this similarity and says she also dislikes when others rely on her. Yuta asks why such a beautiful girl is isn't surrounded by friends. Saki understands what he means. After school, Yuta returns home and meets Akiko before she leaves. She says she has already prepared dinner for them. Yuta says she shouldn't have done it since she works so much, but Akiko replies that she did it quickly as she works as a bartender. She looks at the clock, realizes she's late, and says goodbye to Yuta, asking him to look after Saki. Yuta is sitting and doing his homework in the dark when Saki returns from school. She comes to his room and knocks. Yuta tells her to come in, and Saki enters, saying she's back. Yuta welcomes her back. Saki notices Yuta sitting in the dark and turns on the light, concerned that he might ruin his eyesight. She asks Yuta for advice because she wants to quickly earn some money, about 10,000 yen in an hour or two. However, Yuta tells her that it will be difficult to find such a job. Saki was upset and said that it means, if you don't sell your body, you can't get such money. Yuta thought differently, and after the rumors, he thinks that Saki is really selling her body. Yuta asked Saki what her mother would say if she heard such a thing. Saki replied that her mother would be happy that Saki had grown up. Yuta didn't understand her, because how can one be happy when your daughter sells her body for money? However, Yuta asked why she decided to ask him about it. Saki replied that he had gone to a part-time job yesterday, so she asked. Only then did Yuta understand everything. Before dinner, he told Saki about the rumors and how he had misunderstood her and apologized to her. Saki understood him and said she gets it, considering all those school rumors. Saki said that it's her weapon that helps her survive in society. Saki said that even if people don't notice it, life is a battle. Saki asked Yuta if he saw her mother when she left for work and said, she's beautiful isn't she? To which Yuta replied, yes. Saki said that her mother had only recently finished high school, and that's why she uses her beauty as a weapon and works at night to earn more. Saki said that her appearance distracts from the stereotypes of others, but in fact, she tries her best to study and become better. Yuta wondered if she doesn't get tired. Saki replied that it's worth it. Yuta remembered the past when he had lunch with his mother, and suddenly Saki asked if he didn't feel the same way, to which Yuta replied that he is not that strong. Yuta understood what Saki was leading to, meaning Saki was looking for a part-time job to become independent from society. Yuta ate and decided to look for a part-time job for Saki. Saki was surprised and did not expect Yuta to help her just like that. Yuta told her not to worry, but Saki said she couldn't accept that. Yuta then said that she should cook him miso every day. Saki didn't understand what he meant, and Yuta said that he often eats store-bought food, and after trying today's homemade miso, he would like to eat homemade food. In the end, Yuta and Saki came to an agreement. The next morning, Yuta's father woke him up and said that Saki was there. Yuta went to the kitchen and noticed that Saki was making breakfast. His father and Saki were happy about this event, and his father ran off to work. 
Saki noticed that Yuta couldn't finish his eggs and told him not to force himself, but Yuta said that he was used to eating eggs with soy sauce. Saki said she would make them with soy sauce next time. At his part-time job, Yuta was reading a book about jobs, and his boss was surprised that he was looking for a better job than that one. Yuta said he wasn't looking for himself and that he needed to gain experience to smoothly enter adult life as he had a younger sister. His boss made herself some tea and said that Yuta should always have people in his life he can rely on, even if he himself is a burden, and that not all problems can be solved with money. Having money is good, but his boss joked and asked, how do you think students find themselves rich sugar daddies? She told him not to rush to conclusions and to rely on family. When Yuta returned home in the evening, he shared everything his boss had told him. Saki noticed that Yuta was very close to his boss and wished him luck, but she also said that in some sense, his boss was right. However, Saki still wanted to live independently. She mentioned that her current family were very good people and that she could rely on them. She decided to say that if they were bad people, things would be much easier. Then she stood up and apologized for saying such things. The next morning, Yuta was walking towards school and noticed Saki standing at the crosswalk waiting for the green light. He decided not to approach her too closely, and as soon as the light turned green, Saki walked across. She was wearing headphones and didn't notice a car that ran the the red light and almost hit her. The weather worsened, and Saki was playing tennis with Maya while Yuta watched her, recalling the moment when he had scolded Saki for not looking around and not valuing her life. He wondered what would have happened if he hadn't been there. Saki apologized when suddenly everyone started leaving the tennis court because Maya suggested that it was going to rain. Yuta grabbed his things from the locker and noticed Saki standing at the school entrance without an umbrella in the rain. Yuta returned before Saki, completely soaked, and handed his umbrella to her. After immediately changing clothes, he took a shower, recalling Saki's words about how life is a battle. When Yuta came out of the shower and entered the living room, he saw Saki there with her friend Maya. Yuta lies in his room, recalling the moment when he came out of the shower and Maya rushed to him. Saki explained that Maya really wanted to visit her, and Saki tried to call Yuta to let him know, but she didn't have his phone number, and no one answered the home phone. Yuta explained that he was in the shower at the time, Yuta wanted to apologize, but Saki interrupted him, saying she had told Maya that they were now family. Maya had noticed Yuta approaching Saki during tennis and giving her an umbrella during a recent rain. Yuta apologized again, and Saki suggested they exchange phone numbers. Yuta heard Akiko enter Saki's room and wake her up, saying she wanted to have breakfast together. Saki agreed to help her. They all started having breakfast together and made an omelet with broth. Akiko mentioned that Saki could make it herself, to which Saki responded that hers didn't taste as good. Yuta said she didn't need to go to great lengths, he'd be happy with scrambled eggs. Saki promised to make him scrambled eggs when she was in the mood. Their father left for work, and Yuta offered to do the laundry for Akiko and Saki. Akiko appreciated the offer, but insisted she would try to do it herself. Saki mentioned they had very delicate fabrics, and Yuta admitted he didn't know how to wash such materials. Saki suggested they handle the laundry themselves. As Yuta was about to leave for school, Saki stopped him and said she would go with him. On the way to school, Saki began apologizing to Yuta for the laundry issue, saying she thought Yuta didn't know how to do laundry. She then went further, asking if Yuta wore women's clothes or used makeup. Yuta stopped her and told her not to jump to conclusions. Saki asked him again, didn't he wear women's clothes and use makeup, noting his well-groomed eyebrows and hairstyle. Yuta explained that he just gets haircuts and takes care of himself, but doesn't wear women's clothes. Yuta talked about reflexes, explaining that sometimes people do things reflexively and that it's important to work on oneself to avoid misunderstandings. Saki paused and Yuta approached her, saying he believed she was someone who thought about her mistakes and worked to correct them. Saki stood silently before walking ahead, saying Yuta understood her too well. After school, Yuta returned home and suddenly, Saki asked if he was back startling him with her sudden appearance. At work, Yuta received a message from Saki saying, you looked, didn't you? That evening, Yuta sat on his knees as Saki scolded him for looking at their underwear in the bathroom, but Saki said it was nothing serious and made him Coco, acknowledging that Yuta staring at her underwear was also a reflex. Saki believed he could improve, and Yuta agreed. Saki then teased him, asking if her underwear was pretty. Yuta told her to stop teasing him. Saki agreed with Yuta and said they should close the topic, then went to bed. 
Outside, during physical education class, Maya approached Yuta and asked what was wrong with Saki, noting that she seemed sad today. Yuta asked Saki, everything was okay and if something had happened, but Saki replied that nothing was wrong. That evening at home, Yuta mentioned that their father would return on the last train, and they began having dinner in silence, with no one speaking about anything. Suddenly, Yuta decided to start a conversation, saying he was struggling to find a good part-time job and felt bad that Saki was cooking for him while he hadn't found work yet. He assured her that if she needed anything, he would definitely help her. After dinner, Saki took a bath and then returned to her room. Meanwhile, Yuta was lying on his bed, reading a book. Saki approached Yuta's room and was about to enter when Yuta accidentally dropped his book, causing the lights in his room to go out. Saki took off her top and went to sit next to Yuta on the bed, asking if he wanted to buy her. As Saki sat there, memories flooded back of when they first came to their new family. She was very surprised at how kind and decent Yuta was. He even prepared a bath for her, and the next day, she was amazed that Yuta spoke to her at school and realized what a good person he was. Saki felt sad when Yuta initially believed the school rumors about her, but he quickly saw the truth and stopped believing the rumors. For the first time, Saki easily reached an agreement with someone. The next day, she decided to cook for Yuta, and they agreed that she would cook while he would find her a part-time job, though she didn't have high hopes that he would actually find one. That evening, Maya, Yuta, and Saki played together, and Saki had a lot of fun. Reflecting on the previous day, when Yuta mentioned that impulsiveness and experiencing emotions were two different things, Saki realized that Yuta understood her better than anyone. This made it feel so easy for her, but she began to worry that Yuta might be dangerous because he understood her too well. Yuta told Saki that he hated people like that the most, and that she shouldn't get involved in such things, as it would only make the rumors true. He encouraged her to prove them wrong. Yuta decided to have a serious conversation with Saki, who revealed that her father worked often and wanted to provide for her, so her mother had to work twice as hard. Saki frequently overheard her father speaking harshly about her mother, calling her bad and saying she was worthless. Saki was upset that her father took out his anger on her mother. Yuta shared that his father was similar and that he had the same trauma from his childhood when he saw his parents arguing. Saki supported Yuta and said they had similar problems. Yuta assured her that they would get through it together since they were now siblings, and he wouldn't mind if Saki called him brother. Saki laughed, decided to go to her room, and thanked Yuta for being so kind. She mentioned that she didn't want to call him brother because it would make her rely on him for everything. Every time she thought about Yuta, she felt unusual emotions she couldn't quite understand, and it made it difficult for her to fall asleep, leaving her confused about what was happening to her. 